All right, Khan, Shalom, Shalom, Israel, Shalom to the Torah, Chaji, Asha, Allah, give him your course. All the honor, glory, and praise unto the Most High God, Yahweh, in the name of the Son of God, this is Brother Asha, Allah, coming back to y'all yet another video through the Spirit and Power, Yahweh. Bahashim, Mama, Shalom, Mama, Laki, All right, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. So I'm going to get straight into this, right? So basically, this is going into um, Amos chapter 4. Now, I'm not going to read the whole chapter, but just highlighting certain verses within the, and within the chapter, all right? Because it applies to this day as well, all right? To this day and age that we live in. So let's go to Amos chapter 4 and verse um, 6. It says, And I also have given you cleanness of teeth in all your cities and want of bread in all your places. Yet have you not returned unto me, saith the Lord. So in its proper context, it's going into... The Lord, you know, because in Amos, it's really the Lord proclaiming a lot of um, judgments against the house of Israel and against other nations as well, but namely of the house of Israel. All right. Now, uh, what he's saying to Israel is, look, the Lord is giving Israel cleanness of teeth. What is cleanness of teeth? It's not going into, you know, like toothpaste, right? The Lord is like, you know, I, I'm giving you toothpaste. That's not what cleanness of teeth means. Cleanness of teeth meaning you have nothing to eat, meaning it's a famine. All right. Hunger as what the footnote says. So cleanness of teeth, meaning there's nothing in your teeth because you haven't been eating anything. Why? Because there is a famine. Right. It says in all your cities and want of bread in all your places. Yet have you not returned unto me, said the Lord. You have not returned unto me. Nevertheless, you have not returned unto me. And that even goes in, uh, into play with Revelation. Right. They're not going to be mindful of the scourges as it states in the book of Second Ezra. Right. And in Revelation, it says that even after all these plagues, they're still not going to repent. Man. The wicked are still going to be wicked. Um, you know, the ignorant are still going to be ignorant. That's why the Lord said in Revelation chapter 22. All right. I'm going to get that preset real quick. Um, Revelation 22. That's why the Lord said this, you know, Revelation 22 verse 11. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. So if somebody wants to remain in darkness and doesn't and hates the light does not want to be reproved and does not want to change his ways for you how about you have a shot you know um then the lord just said let him be filthy let him be unjust you know because he wants to remain in his filth like a pig like a dog you know what i'm saying and he yeah he's getting scourged by the lord but he doesn't want to admit that that's the lord doing that to him he wants to blame it on other things he wants to blame it on the economy he wants to blame it on donald trump or joe biden that's why he's getting catching the hell that he's catching. He doesn't want to give the credit to, to the most High God. You know, see, you know, men that are spiritual, women that are spiritual in this truth, when they get chastised, when they get punished, they immediately um, don't blame it. But they say, OK, that's the most High right there. That's the most High, or that's Satan or, you know, that's the most High through the hand of Satan. You know, we understand these things. Right. The Lord said that he that he which is spiritual judges all things. Yet he himself is judging no man. First Corinthians chapter two, verse 14 on down. All right. But the natural man, he can't receive the things uh, of the spirit of the most High, for they are of uh, uh, foolish. It's like you foolish unto him. Now they can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. I'm gonna get that precept. I just quoted it. But this is a uh, second Corinth. Uh, it's like you first Corinthians chapter two, verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judging no man. So he that is spiritual is going to understand, okay, when the famine kicks off, that's the most high God. Um, we see the gas prices increasing, that's the most high. Uh, we understand that, um, you know, certain things that may happen in our lives personally, you know, whether it be of ch uh, chastisement or of judgment, we understand that it is the most high, nothing else, right? We're not blaming it on Joe Biden or Donald Trump or Mother Nature, Father Time or uh, Buddha, you know what I'm saying? Or uh, Santa Claus, is, you know, like these other idols or these false gods that people give credit to, right? We understand that it's the most high at the end of the day. So when we go to Amos chapter 4, the Lord is literally chastising his people and, judge, and judging them, but they still are not turning back onto him. And we see that even to this day, you know, in this day and age, our people is getting shot in the streets. Our people are getting, you know, have been oppressed for hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of years. Right. Um, and still, as the, the Lord is still and even though you still have that small remnant that is turning back onto the Mosai, the Mosai is still as a majority 
right? Israel still as a majority is not turning back to the Lord, right? You still have our people being wicked and docile and idle and not caring about anything, man. Even though they're getting scores, they're just ignoring all of the signs. They're ignoring all of the facts, ignoring everything, right? They're ignoring the fact that the Mosai is literally judging them for everything that they're doing. They don't want to turn back to the Mosai. They don't want to give credit to the Lord. Uh, this is Amos chapter 4, verse 7. And also I have withholding the rain from you when there were yet three months to the harvest. And I caused it to rain upon one city and caused it to not cause it not to rain upon another city. One piece was rain upon and the piece whereupon it rained not with it. So two or three cities wandered onto one city to drink water, but they were not satisfied. Yet have you not returned unto me, saith the Lord. So the Lord is talking about, hey, look, I'm, I'm having one, uh, one city to be starving and, and thirsty as hell. And I'm having one city to have food and drink. And you got to go to this other city to get stuff. I mean, that's happening today as well. You know, even in Babylon the Great, you might have to go to another city to get what you want because they don't have it in that, in that city. They don't have it in that store. You know, they ran out. They're out of stock. So you have to go to this other uh, city or even other store to get what, what you wanted to get, you know, or you look at this gas station, this gas station, seven, uh, seven dollars for gas, you know. So you have to drive 20 more minutes out to get this to to get to this gas station that has uh, that's that's um, selling gas for five dollars a gallon and et cetera. You know what I'm saying? So. I mean, this is all applying to, to modern day as well. And you have this going on in the ancient world. So even though a, uh, the Lord was putting Israel through manifold judgments, famine, pestilence, um, you know, all of this, yet they were not turning back onto the Most High, right? Verse 9, I have smitten uh, you with blasting and mildew. What's blasting and mildew? Blasting and mildew is when... Um, you're growing crops and it's basically like a disease um, that destroys all the crops. It's called blasting and mildew. When that mildew is like mold, I, I believe it's like a bacteria that gets onto the plants. So if that mildew or that blasting gets uh, gets upon whatever crop that you're uh, growing, it will spread like a wildfire and it will destroy all the crops. And now they're and now it's dead. You can't eat it anymore. So the Lord smites people with blasting and mildew. Right. When your gardens and your vineyards and your fig trees and your olive uh, trees increased, the palmer worm devoured them. Yet ye have not returned unto me, uh, saith the Lord. So the Lord is just re-emphasizing um, re this. He keeps saying this. Look, I I'm literally giving you famine. I'm judging you right in your face. Yet you still don't want to turn back. Unto me. Yet you still don't want to uh, seek me and pray unto me and fast. Smote upon your chest. You still don't want to keep the commandments. It says, verse 11, I have overthrown some of you as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, as ye were as a firebrand plucked out of the burning, yet ye have not returned unto me, saith the Lord. Therefore, thus I will do unto thee, O Israel, and because I will do this unto thee, prepare to me thy God, O Israel. You see that? And that's scary, man. Well, that all praise to you. I will watch my shock, one more lucky, I will shock, quick breakdown. Um, the water for the name. I'll praise to the Mosah.